What's going on, Bench fans? I got one of my favorite people that I interact with on the show today. Uh, we're talking basketball thoughts. How many minutes per game for each player? We're going to try to predict out the rotation down to the minutes. It is a crazy new roster. Let's dig into it and figure out who we think is going to replace those minutes that we lost on Wisconsin. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Happy Tuesday. Whenever you're watching this, wherever you're getting it, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for joining, for talking Badgers, for helping us build this community. Y'all are so appreciated. Today's episode brought to you by Games. I'm done with the Games. I'm at Create an account. Use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. All right, let's get Dylan Graff on the show. Um, one of my favorite, I was telling before the show, no hyperbole, no smoke, not gassing you up. One of my favorite people I get to interact with, especially when we're talking hoops. And that's what we're doing today. You ready? Absolutely, man. Uh, and likewise, uh, it's talking talking all the hoops with uh, Ryan Herring is good for the soul. Love that. That's that's the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. Um, and speaking of which, drinking the varsity ale. Uh, how is it? What's the impression? You know, I'm out here. I'm drinking for a cause. Uh, I would say that some of the early returns on that uh, scale one to ten, probably give it a an eight point two. You know, it's pretty crisp, uh, refreshing. Goes down easy. Uh, Tailgate and beer. Uh, something I could see myself crushing quite a few of this fall. Um, I would say pretty good. I would say if you're a you're bush light kind of guy, um, you're gonna like what Varsity Golden Ale has brings to the table. How many of those do you got to drink to get a five star point guard? Like what? What's the what's the investment on that? Um, you know, I still got uh, my people kind of working on the numbers behind the scenes to see what that looks like, and uh, you know, I, I'm not quite sure. I'm, I tell you right now, I've been doing my part since uh, some Prairie Woodman's has got them in stock, but. Um, and then collectively, once we get the numbers crunched, maybe as a community, we can uh, become a program overnight. I love it. Good man. All right. So what we're going to do on this show is a lot of roster turnover. We've been kind of, Dylan and I have been kind of waiting for the dust to really fully settle to do this. We're going to go through the roster and just kind of try to predict what the rotation is, the minutes. Um, let's start at point guard. We'll just kind of go back and forth. You take point guard, I'll take shooting guard. Um, talk. Let's talk through the point guard minutes distribution, what we think that's going to look like. Yeah, so obviously, I think the point. I mean, point guard is going to be. There, there's so many different variables that are in play here. Chucky Hepburn leaves, lose a three-year starter, a guy who you could count on for you know north of 30 minutes a game. You bring in Cameron Hunter uh, from Central Arkansas. He's you know missed missed a year. You got Daniel Freitag coming in, highest-rated point guard. Uh, you know, recruit in the in the guard era, and then you return Kamari McGee, who you know was a spark plug for the. I think the 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 bench as a whole did a lot of good things. Uh, for me, I kind of got my minutes distribution here, looking like I have Cameron Hunter for 22 minutes, uh, Daniel Freetag getting 14 minutes. I think he's going to be someone who, you know, a lot of people have you know said uh, I got to have a point guard for it, you know, to learn behind whatever. I think I think Daniel Freetag is going to do some learning beside, you know, whoever starts at point guard, and I believe that will be Cameron Hunter ultimately. And uh, I'm not writing off Kamari McGee. Um, this is a guy who he's just, I'm telling you, he's going to find his way into this rotation. He's going to find his way into minutes. I've got him for about four minutes um, at the point guard spot. Uh, we'll, we'll get into it in the next group. Um, I do see, you know, Cameron Hunter getting a few more minutes uh, as an off ball guard. And we'll get into those reasons there. But uh, I think Daniel Freetag is going to come in and play a pretty massive role for this team right away there's really no ceiling for what's possible for him i think cameron hunter does a lot of really great things in the pick and roll uh gets downhill honestly is a, a pretty good spot up shooter somebody that's why i believe he can play some some minutes off ball for wisconsin so i i think all three of these point cards see the floor in some capacity where are you at ryan yeah um i have a few more minutes and by the way for those watching we have not compared notes on this so um, I was very curious. I had McGee for four minutes as well at the point guard spot. So like he's going to get some minutes. He's going and to And those play. minutes can be impactful. I mean, he's, he's yeah. not the same player, but I've often likened him to Showalter on those 2015 teams when he was coming in for six minutes at a clip, mm -hmm. busting his ass, making a couple energy plays. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just, just kind of keep keeping things at the course. Like, I think you can make a big impact in those small minutes. You know, fighting over a screen for two minutes really hard, right? Like, 
just being a complete pest defensively. Yeah, you can absolutely change. You can change two or three possessions. And when you're talking about a team that plays close games, two or three possessions can be the difference in a game. Um, yeah, so I, he's going to play. I have him for four minutes. I have a few more minutes at the point for Cam Hunter. I have him at about 25. I do have him a couple minutes off ball as well. Okay. And I actually, I actually have – I kind of wonder if it was free take. I was going back and forth. I think he might get more off ball minutes because I don't know if you want to – bring him in and say, run the point as a freshman. You might just want to bring him in and say, go be an alpha score. Just get downhill, get to the rack. So I have actually Klesman kind of sliding over more at the point when you need okay. kind of a better presence there for a few minutes. Um, so I have more of a combination of Klesman, Hunter getting about 25, um, McGee getting the four, and then free take kind of splitting between the, the two and the one is kind of where I'm at on that. Thoughts on – free take just coming in as and just telling them go go get buckets i i I think that they're why why wouldn't you i mean i i overall i agree that he he very well could play some some off ball this is someone who you're just you're going to find ways to get him on the court because quite frankly he's probably going to be one of your top seven players from the jump or at least has potential to be um yeah he's so he can score in a lot of different ways but i i feel very comfortable in really what he could bring at the one or the two. And I think maybe to your point, especially with like a guy like Klesmit, in addition to Kamari McGee, like you have a lot of guys who can initiate the offense. I mean, nobody needs Max Klesmit to be a point guard for, for 10 plus minutes a game, but he can, he can spell you a few when the rotations tighten up. And, uh, you know, I think there's some, some all right size here. All of these guys are capable of defending the one or the, the two in a pinch. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that, there's a very real possibility that Daniel Frite could be asked to to come in and, and score, provide provide that scoring threat off the bench right away. All right, let's go to the two spot. Uh, I've got Klesmit, um getting obviously the bulk of that. I have him. I have him as a leading minutes guy this year. I'm at 31 total minutes, but some of that, like I said, at about five ish. I think. And I think your point is dead on. You don't want Klesmit trying to run point for like 10 minutes, but I think five minutes, a couple minutes a half. He's he's kind of just carrying that weight. So I'm at 31 total, but like five of that over at the point. So about 26 at the two. Um, I have Cam Hunter for about two minutes. I don't think he's going to play a ton at the two, to be honest, because I think Blackwell's maybe a better option there at times shifting up. I think Free Tag's maybe a better option there. I think Klesman's going to play a lot there. Um, and then I have Free Tag, as I said, getting – I think I think he's going to play about 15 minutes a game total is what I have for Free Tag, and I think about 10 of that's going to come at the two. So that's basically my two-guard rotation. It's, it's Klesman, it's Free Tag, and it's a little bit of, of Blackwell. I think that overall we're in a pretty similar place in terms of like our how many minutes we think they'll get because uh you know I, I've got free tag getting about 14 minutes a game. Um I, I see maybe some a little bit more of them coming at the point, but I'm also not married to that idea. I think this is a team that's gonna obviously very matchup dependent, but I think they're gonna play small quite a bit. And in some capacity, we're gonna see combinations of free tag, hunter, Klesmit, Blackwell, three of those four on the floor you know, plenty, I think, throughout the season. Um, so, yeah, I guess w where they play and how they play might, you know, m more so be dictated by the the pace of the game. But uh, I, I've got Klesmit playing uh, 28 minutes, and that might be a little low. The only reason that I have that is it appears that right around 28 minutes, if you look back a lot of, you know, the, the minute distribution from the starters over guard's career, it looks like 28 minutes appears to be where guard likes maybe prefers them to be at um obviously that's not how it always works out um so mine's going to be a glass half full approach i'm going to say he gets those 28 minutes for the right reasons maybe uh i've got eight minutes behind that going to john blackwell and uh, i do have four minutes um from cam hunter off ball just because i have maybe fright free tag and a little bit more on ball role um most of that projection on mind just comes from the fact that you know synergy stats show that hunter you know, is a is a well above average uh, off ball shooter, and so maybe that's just a uh, an element that they try to get involved a little bit. Either way, I think uh, I'm not too worried about free tag and Hunter getting their shots. Now your point's pretty pretty good with the yeah. guard minutes. I mean, so Store played 29 minutes a game last year. Store's maybe one of the the top portal additions that people look for. He played 29 minutes a game. Wall was at 28, right? So, <clears throat> I mean, you're not off on the, the fact that guard tries to keep him right around that point. Pepper played 33, but Pepper is a different. For sure. I, there, there were points last year where I, I may, may have been in the big 10 tournament where he, he turned and asked Klesman to bring the ball up because he was so gassed. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
Chuck, Chucky was uh, he was a tremendous floor general. I think we're all going to miss what he brought to the table. Let me ask you this um, side side kind of a segue off this conversation. Does this Badgers team have a point guard, and is that a problem? I I think that we I, I definitely think that we have a point guard. I, I I believe that Cameron Hunter will fill that role fine. Um, my optimism comes maybe more from how the offense has changed from like what it has been in the past. I think that it will favor a a point guard who you know can get downhill, get to the free throw line a little bit more, uh, a lot more of those pick and roll actions. I think he's somebody who maybe fits the direction that they're trying to go. And, you know, guards talked about a little this off season about uh, he can't say enough nice things about Kirk Penny and the the changes that they've made there. But uh, now they have the opportunity. They implemented it. It succeeded. And now they can recruit to it. And so they're, you know, I think they've targeted a little bit different type of player. And even if you look at like maybe the 2025 recruiting class, I think a couple of the offers that have come out, uh, you know, more recently, maybe reflect some of how this offensive system is transitioning. So, no, I don't think that Cameron Hunter is a, you know, a traditional point guard, ultimately. I, I think that he's going to be the more ball-dominant player, but uh, I don't think he needs to be what Chucky Hepburn was. I think he just needs to be who Cameron Hunter is. Yeah, and to your point with Penny, now Penny has an entire offseason to kind of continue working those tweaks. They have more shooting, right? I think that's – listen – who knows shooting better than Penny, right? Playing not just his game, but playing internationally too, which is is a game that focuses on spacing and, and kind of off ball stuff. So, you you add that off season in, and then you bring in the fact that you you took away a floor. I don't know what the opposites of a floor spacer, a floor clogger, and wall. I love Tyler Wall, by the way. There's a lot of people. Absolutely, gonna absolutely. We're gonna have more space without it, it, it. It's tough when you have for a couple seasons now. You've had two big men that are not what I would classify as pick and roll big men. And also not really your prototypical pick and pop big man. So I think that there was a, you know, I, quite frankly, I think the spacing was hurt quite a bit. And that's why I think that Stephen Crowell is the biggest winner of this entire offseason. And, uh, you know, we'll get to that position group a little bit. But uh, I, I think Stephen Crowell is the biggest winner of the this offseason's portal editions. You know, this is a pretty pro Stephen Crowell show. So I, I like to hear that. Uh, we are going to take one quick break, come back with Dylan Graff, continue going through these positions. We've done point guard, shooting guard. We're going to get into the front court. A lot of moving pieces there. Uh, but first, a quick break for our friends of the show over on FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one place to get all your sports betting needs, um, whether you're looking for futures, parlays, teasers, spreads, whatever it is. Uh, Dylan, I bet with my heart. I'm kind of curious. Do you do you ever bet against the Badgers? If you know if you know it's a good line, or instinctively as a fan, are you just not allowed to do that? Uh, I do not often bet against the Badgers. Um, I but I have transitioned more into more of a little bit more of a prop bet guy, where you know o- over under Hepburn getting two and a half assists, Stephen Crawl over you know nine and a half points. I, I've I've decided I can't go. I can't. I don't have it in my heart to bet against the boys, so I can just try to apply logic in different ways. I absolutely love that. That's where I'm at too. I, I can't. I can't bet against them. Um, and over at fanduelcom slash lockdown is where I do all that gambling, all that betting. Please do it responsibly as always, but baseball's rolling. Um, NBA finals are coming up. Obviously you can also get into some futures over at fanduelcom slash lockdown right now. New customers, $250 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, fanduelcom slash lockdown. All right, let's get into the front court. Let's go to the small forward spot. Kick it over to you to start this one. <clears throat> so I've got John Tanjay getting a, a pretty healthy amount of the minutes. I've got him for for 26 minutes and uh, as my starting wing. Um, a lot of that with Tanjay just comes down to, yeah, I, I, I again, I will acknowledge this is a player coming off of an injury, uh, missed the majority of last season at Mizzou. Um, but Wisconsin has typically been their best on offense when they have a three who's a little bit more of that prototypical small forward mold. I um, think he checks a lot of those boxes that way and uh, gives him an experienced option who knows how to put the ball in the hole. Uh, his th- career 37% three-point shooter. I think that's someone you just, you, you plug him in. I think that's your your starting three. Um, I, I wouldn't go as far as call him as a dead eye shooter, but he's somebody as a catch and shoot guy, I think is, um, you know, borderline elite if he can be something close to what he was at a, uh, Colorado State. So I've got him as an option that you plug and play. I thought that was a really solid addition by Wisconsin like, to go and, quite frankly, get a guy who had already committed to New Mexico and, um, you know, kind of kind of throw their weight around the same way that 
maybe a, a Louisville might have done might have done to Wisconsin, something like that. So I think they found a way to to find talent in a slightly lo- lower level and you know go and get someone at a pretty serious position in need. I've got John Blackwell for 14 minutes there. Um, you know, on the wing, I think he was the primary backup to AJ Store. You know, all of last season. Uh, I think he can play bigger than he is. I'm not real worried, you know, about him filling either of those spots. Um, and that's all I have at the at the three. Those are the only two guys that I think need to be manning any of those minutes. Quite frankly, unless you're trying to go three three guards, which still might include Blackwell. Yeah, I'm going to throw a bit of a curve in there. I, I, well, listen, Gilmore's going to play. I think he could get a minute or two at the three. It's going to be between the three and the four in certain lineups. I know people are going to be frustrated with that. He played nine minutes a game last year in 33 minutes. He's going to play. So I have him for like a minute or two here and a minute or two at the four. But yeah, other than that, I'm right there with you. I have Tanjay with a few less minutes. Uh, I got him at 24. It's at this spot. And then I have Blackwell basically coming in and mopping up the rest. I think that's an easy one. That That's a great fit for Blackwell. I think Tanjay is the guy I'm most – like I don't think he's the highest upside guy they added, but he's the guy I'm most sure is going to be a good fit. Like I, I'm very couldn't sure agree more. plug in and Badger fans are going to like him. He doesn't raise the ceiling, but he keeps the floor from falling out. He's a connector. He's a connecting piece, and you need those. I, I, I couldn't agree more with that take. Out of all of the additions, he's the one I'm most certain, you know, they're they're going to get what they wanted out of that. They're going to get a Big Ten caliber starting three, um, a proven shooter, and and that that's, a, that's an incredibly valuable ad. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. When I was talking with Coach Gothier, we, we were breaking down Tanji's game a little bit, and people sleep on the fact that, like, we're like, hey, he's probably just going to be a floor spacer. That is so – NBA teams spend first round picks on guys who are probably just floor spacers. That is such yeah. a valuable thing on this team. Absolutely. I I'm I would I'd be willing to bet pretty easily he's going to score double digit points a game. Probably be a you know like a third option on this team and somebody who just a a, re- a really good shooter. Overall this team as a whole has gotten in my opinion much better from a shooting perspective and that's that's huge. It's huge for the direction they're going. Let me I thought you brought up something really good with Tanjay too. It shows that guard is willing to play the game again, like a little bit, right? Um, I think there's a, a bit of a perception there that this, the, the portal era, the dealing with some of the, the money and athletes and egos and demands that comes with it. Those are just natural consequences of the era that we're in. He went and got a guy that was committed to a different program, a different uh, D one program and said, no, uh, well, like, I think there are people who thought guard was above that. And you can't be above that in today's era of basketball. Though there's still ways to do it, but you got to add talent. Absolutely. I, I think that they are, there may have been a period of time where they were trying to do it, the the air quotes, the right way. But uh, you, you can't do that. I mean, obviously, saw what happened with Chucky. What have had, what's happening all over college basketball. I mean, not just exclusive to Wisconsin. It's happening everywhere. Um, if you're not willing to play that game, you're you're not going to feel the roster uh, – good enough to compete in this new look big 10. Yeah. A hundred percent. All right, let's go to the four. Um, this one, I've got Amos coming in. I got him at right about that 28 minute, that sweet spot that you had wall played 29 last year. Um, Amos is going to give you different qualities there, but I think he's going to soak up the majority of those minutes, more of a floor spacer, more athletic, but he's not quite as rugged. I think you're going to lose something on the boards. I think you're going to lose something in toughness. I think you're going to lose that. What Here's, here's a, Question I have for you too. Another segue. Sorry, I have all sorts of segues, but I like picking your brain on this stuff. Cam Hunter and Amos don't exactly come from great programs. There, there's an intangible, intrinsic quality to being a winning basketball player. It's not that they don't have it, but they haven't been in cultures that have fostered it. That worries me a little bit, man. Um, but either I, way, that's totally Amos, fair. Like, does that have you thought about that? And that's the one thing that really quick going back to Tanjay. Tanjay, I don't really care about the Missouri. He was hurt. It didn't fit. Sometimes you go, and sometimes that's true for all people. You go to a place and it just doesn't work and it's not your best and you leave. But Colorado State was a good team. They won 20 games, 25 games with him. So he's coming from a place that has won. The other two haven't, and that worries me a bit. Yeah, I mean, that's that's where you you just have to hope that there's really strong leadership on this roster. I, I, I look at Max Glesman as a guy who I think is going to be a strong leader for this team. Um you know, while Stephen Crawl might not be that guy you think of, it's going to be a vocal leader. I think he's somebody who's going to show up and do things the right way every day and just kind of be someone who maybe leads by example a little bit. But you need those guys 
to be to be that. And quite frankly, like a guy like Carter Gilmore, who's been around the block, who's earned everything he's gotten at Wisconsin, you know, whether you care for him or not, it's a different discussion. Um, but I think it's guys like that who are going to have to foster some of that leadership and some of those culture pieces for guys like that who are coming from programs that really struggled and they're playing up. I, I, I think that's a that's a really good point. Yeah. And then I'll uh, finish out my rotation. I just agree with you that you're like, that's a good point. I'm like, yeah, I know. And then <laughs> I didn't mean it to come off like that. Uh, finishing out my rotation, I've got, like I said, I got Amos at about 28. Gilmore is going to play. I think he's going to play mostly the minutes he gets are going to be here. It's going to be like two or three minutes, but he's going to, I'm telling y'all he's going to play. And that's in two or three minutes spurts. That's fine, guys. That's, that's totally okay. And then I have Hunt, our Nolan Winter coming in. I, I'm going to have him splitting between the four and the five. I think he's going to get minutes at both. I'm curious how he can play with Crowell in those minutes. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet defensively how this is going to work, but I have him getting about 10 minutes at the four. So that, there's my four rotation. So we're not real far off here at all. Uh, I've got Xavier Amos for 28 minutes as well. Um, maybe my way of hedging uh, between Ilver and Gilmore. I, I gave them each four apiece. I think one of them will ultimately probably start claiming something in that six to eight minute range. Um, I think in a perfect world, you'd like it to be Marcus Silver. Uh, Greg has consistently talked about what he can do and has done in practice. Um, but it quite frankly, hasn't translated to the games yet. So um, if it's not going to be him, then maybe it's going to be Gilmore for a couple more minutes because uh, of what he can bring defensively. And is just somebody that guard trusts. And then I also have winter penciled in for, about four minutes, I would say, at the four. And part of that isn't necessarily because I think that he pairs well with Stephen Crowell, uh, you know, as the four by any means. I just think he's someone who is probably in line to take a pretty big leap. They view him as a kind of an heir apparent Steve at the five. And, um, you know, I've got, I've got a guy like Nolan playing at least 14 minutes this season, and I think – that's going to come at times maybe opposite of Stephen Crowell, even if it's just for a minute or two here, a minute or two there. Um, I think he's going to have to play a little bit before. I think he has the lateral movement skills where maybe you can get by in a pinch for, like I said, a minute or two. But, uh, you know, there were times that he kind of looked like a baby deer and showed that he had a lot of, you know, physical uh, development still that needed to take place. So, I, I for the record, I don't love the the winter minutes at the four. Um, but overall, I think it's just going to be because Winter deserves more minutes than he got last year. and uh, We'll be counted on to play a little bit bigger role this season. Yeah, here, here's my theory with Winter at the four. Because I, I have Winter penciled in at 20 minutes. So I have him. That might be one of the ones we have a little bigger discrepancy on, right? Because um, I think he, he needs to take a big jump. I think this team needs a little bit of rebounding toughness. I think Winter showed you heart last year. Um, he battles. He battles, right? Rebounding rates are very similar to Stephen Crowell. I think there's going to be moments in games in the Big Ten where you need another guy out there that'll battle and has some size. And you're going to say, we might get cooked a little bit defensively, but we just need some size. And then the other part of it is, and this you said this, I 100% agree. I think he has to play. And Crowell's still going to get his 20 to 30. So you got to find him minutes. That's got to be at the four then. So yeah. it's not perfect, but I think he's got to play. And I think you need some more length at times. Yeah, he's somebody who is going to be a core piece of this program moving forward. You know, I think in a perfect world, that's it's going to be him. That's going to be Daniel Freetag. These are guys that you want to get enough minutes to get where they need to be in their development to to take on those big roles when these seniors end up graduating. And uh, yeah, I, I think you just you have you have to give them the minutes. Come hell or high water, um, it might not be perfect at all times, but. Uh, He's somebody who he's one he's one of the highest upside pieces on this roster. And I, I believe he's going to become a really nice player for Wisconsin. And I hope that this is the offseason where we see a, a really significant jump. I love that question. Give me your three highest upside pieces on the roster. Rank them. I I would say boy. count counting the incoming class. We're counting free tag and Robeson. So if I'm counting them, um, I would say I probably have to put Nolan Winter at the very top just because. I'm not saying that I, I have the most confidence in him reaching that ceiling, but a seven foot big man that can run the floor like he does, that can, you know, move laterally quick enough to defend, you know, multiple positions. I'm not saying he can defend them yet, but you just don't find a lot of seven footers that can move like that. And uh, 
even though he shot roughly like what 31 percent from three last year that's a good looking shot and he was really confident when they swung the ball on the side just letting that ball go and not all freshmen have that and maybe that maybe part of my uh the way I think about it is skewed with Bo Ryan, you know, because a lot of freshmen used to kind of kind of pause when they got got the ball swung to them out on the wing. But uh, I, I think he's my answer for the highest upside, just because he's a seven footer, runs well, could can shoot, you know, um, could put the ball in the deck a little little bit. Um, so I'll go with him. I, I would probably have to throw Daniel Freetag in there, maybe next. Nah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna bump him down. I'm gonna go Xavier Amos next um he's he's pretty athletic uh can stretch the floor they said played at a lower level so i think there's quite a bit of juice left to squeeze there um you know we saw aj store come a long way even just in his one season in wisconsin like we watched it from the first game of the season to the end of the season well he was Mm -hmm. certainly no you know finished product and uh maybe not the most refined player that you've ever seen he was he came miles from who he was on the beginning of the season. I think that Amos could experience a somewhat similar, you know, development arc over the course of a year. Um, I like his length. I like what he brings is maybe not necessarily a shot blocker, but um, maybe a weak side defender. I, I, something like that. I think he's another one who can move well at his size. So I will go with him and then maybe Daniel free tag third. And um, he's probably the one that I have maybe the most confidence in hitting the upside of all of them. Um, you know, he's got good size at six, three, but uh I think he's someone who's probably reached a lot of what he is physically already. Um, to his credit, that's just a, a ton of work put in behind the scenes. Um, I feel very confident in him reaching reaching whatever heights he has in his career. Uh, just don't know that maybe due to measurables that he has maybe some of the upside as the other two. What about you? That's tough, right? Like I I would probably go and listen, I'm probably guilty of the, the, the shiny thing syndrome, right? I might go free take one. If we're just talking upside ceiling, I there, here's the thing there there's, I think there's a world where he never put on the shoulder pads and he really focused on basketball. Right. And he did more skill development and he went to more circuits. He didn't get hurt in football. I think there's a development arc with, dual sport guys that isn't fully realized as quickly. So uh, you combine the physical upside talking to him, he's wired the right way. Um, I know I'm not. No, he incredibly mature, man. He's got a head on his shoulders that some days I'm not sure I have yet. I'm not that mature. I'm 41. Like, (laughs) I like, I hope I'm not embarrassing. He might not ever see this, but he, we were doing a show and he had a list of goals for the day. And he was showing me, I'm like, I, I was like, I need to do that. Like, dude, yeah. I'm 41. Like, I have a top secret security clearance. I mean, people, I, should, I don't even know how to say it, but I do. But, like, he, he's more mature than I am. He should have that clearance. So That's I think why I'm you, incredibly confident that he's going to get yeah. where he's going. I think when you I, pair up that maturity with those physical skills. Um, but here's here's the one. Here's the one I disagree with you on. So, I mean, we're both kind of seeing the same thing with free tag. We have it a little around. I would probably go free tag. And then I'd probably go Blackwell. I, I think the upside on Blackwell gets slept on because physically he's he's not he, he's not he's not the Adon, he's not doesn't chip out of the gym, but you're looking at a guy that posted elite free throw rates last year in terms of free throws forced. Freshmen don't do that. Um near elite shooting percentage. I thought his feel for the game is incredible for his age. That's a skill that people don't talk about. I think he's a chance to be a three and D wing in the NBA if he keeps developing. I think he is not not NBA lottery pick, but like somebody in the second round and then he carves out like a 10 year NBA career. So I might go him and then I'll go winter with Blackwell. And it, it, it it's going to come off as a knock. And I, I absolutely do not mean it that way. I think I already know who John Blackwell is. And I, I, I didn't really see any glaring holes in his game last year. I, I think that this is who he is. And I think he's going to continue to get better. Um, I think if he's here for all four years, he's going to be one of those guys that just leads you in March. Like he just f- physically, I think he's already there. Um, I, I think he is going to be a tremendous college basketball player. Uh, I just think I already know who he is to a degree. I, I it doesn't mean I don't think the numbers will continue to improve, but for me, only reason I'm leaving him off is I just don't know how much more I can project with his game but that's mostly a credit to him. He's already polished for a kid who walked in 
from day one, Greg Gard talked that he, you know, before the season opener, he wasn't even sure John Blackwell was going to be a member of the rotation until the last two weeks. He just forced his way in there. And it was pretty evident from day one that he was one of our probably five best players from the jump. Like he, one of the most dependable players on the roster and somebody who I think is a massive piece of what you're looking at here for the future. Yeah, that's well said. And I, I would say like boring consistency is a skill into itself, right? Being like boringly reliable. Um, all right, let's go to the center spot before I, I take you on a whole nother rabbit hole here. Uh, what I think this one's going to be probably pretty straightforward, but what, what do you have for the breakdown at center? So I've got uh Steven Crowell getting, getting 30 minutes um, right around where he was last year. Um, and perhaps that's one where you give a couple more to, to Nolan, uh, keep Steve fresh, but, uh, I've got Nolan getting about 10 minutes at the, at the five spot and that's it right now. Um, I don't see any need to put Chris Hodges out on the floor, um, you know, on a nightly basis. And obviously they've talked about, they, they want to add another five from the transfer portal. Um, They've they've gotten in deep, had visits with a couple of guys that committed elsewhere. Uh, that front has gotten a little quiet. You know, obviously they want that Chris Vogt type. And if they can get that, you know, like you were saying before, I think this team needs somebody who's physical, who can rebound and, quite frankly, just bring toughness. Um, mm -hmm. I thought this defense was pretty soft last year, and it's, it's a concern that I have about this team maybe still going into next season. But – uh as it stands, I've just got like a 30-10 split between Steve and uh, Winter. And I think if you do find that guy in the transfer portal, you can bring in for another six to eight minutes and kind of just be that rim-running physical center. Uh, that would be great. And I think it would improve this roster on the margins. That would It would help quite a bit, I believe. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I mean, that's, that's probably the easiest spot to project. I think I'm at 28-12, but you're splitting hairs at that point. Uh, it's still Crowell's job. <clears throat> and then I want to ask you this to kind of get out, out the door – Hey, I want to give you an opportunity. Like, I know where to find your work. I was actually flying today, and I pulled up several of Badger Notes articles at, on the airport. Uh, so I had some stuff queued up for my plane ride. But uh, for those who don't know, where they, where can they find what you got going on? Uh, so, um, you know, got my stuff over at Badger Notes. Uh, I've got an incredible team over there. Uh, been a blessing just to connect with all those people in the community and kind of watch them flourish. And uh, as a part of that, um, I'm going to try to kind of you know, give them a little bit more opportunity to spread their wings and uh, do a little bit more coverage. You know, coming into this season, we'll have credentials for football and everything and kind of give them that uh, runway. And so I'm going to be taking uh, some of my work over to uh, All Badgers um, where, you know, Matt Bells used to uh, be the site publisher and uh, kind of rev revive that, uh, do a lot of my own uh, writing over there. I'm still going to be writing over at Badger Notes, still going to be involved in, uh, you know, our bi-weekly podcast that we got going on over there um badger notes is still very much uh, going to be my priority and working with those guys in that team but uh just trying to kind of create as many avenues for people to continue you know growing their own voice and uh you know making creating work that moves them build the community man that's one of the things you do best um you've given voices to a lot of really talented people which is awesome and they're wanna... all smarter than me that's that's the oh. best part and so as soon as people figure this stuff out then nobody will ever want to hear from me again Dude, everybody I have on the show is smarter than me. Like, that's the whole point, right? You, you get smarter people on to make everyone – like, I get smarter by having people like you on. So everybody that comes on is smarter, and that's how we build the community. It's not about egos. It's about it's about new voices and just chop, just chopping up badger stuff, man. Uh, out the door, I want to ask you this. What's the grade for this offseason, the black and white grade? And what I mean by that is throw out all the – does is our NIL budget good enough? Is this or that? Because ultimately that doesn't matter, right? Like ultimately it, it's, it adds context to it, but ultimately you either succeed or fail. What's, what's the black and white grade this off season? Boy, and I think I'm going to give you a pretty boring answer and I'm going to call it a B. I think that for the most part, they, they addressed all of the positions that, that they needed to. I mean, you go out, Xavier Amos is that stretch four that I think you desperately needed. Um, to me, that was the most important position that be targeted, um, mostly because I, I just I don't know how many guys there are in the portal that can play at this level that can be difference makers. Um, I, I do really like that addition. 
Uh, Cameron Hunter, I think, is somebody who, that, you know, maybe there are reasons uh, for pause. You know, assist turnover ratio isn't anything to write home about. Uh, not a not an accomplished, you know, three point shooter. Um, but you pair him maybe with some some better shooters around him, and uh, you know, maybe not have to have him such a high usage role. Perhaps that unlocks the best version of him. Um, and then John Tanjay, I think, as we had said before, is somebody who I think is a really, really high floor addition for one season, um, who again brings a lot of spacing. And so for me, it's a B. Um, I, I think you did exactly what you needed to. I, I don't know that you hit any home runs, um, but I feel pretty confident that they've replaced a lot of the production that went out the door. Um, I don't think it's a more talented team than it was a year ago, but I think maybe more consistent. Um, just th there's programs trending so offensive focused that I think they got guys who, who pair well with what they want to do, the direction they're going for me. It's a B. I, I, I like what they did. Um, I don't think it gr drastically moved the needle. But prior to uh, the run on bringing all three of those guys in, I think that was feeling like a pretty low moment. And uh, in two weeks' time, I think Greg Gard did what it took to uh, you know have an NCAA tournament team again. Yeah, that's well said. I, th I think he salvaged it for sure. I'm a little lower. I'm, I think I'm more like in the C range because I think you kind of – I don't think you got better, right? I think you kind of tread water a little bit this offseason. And – there's 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 real risk with bringing in a couple guys who missed a lot of time with injury last year and another guy that, that Northern Illinois right you start to look at these things I feel like you got to string together some ifs to make this thing work like if Cameron Hunter's healthy and if Tanjay's healthy I, and if I definitely can, agree I I have I have some pause with this group on the defensive end um, you know they had their fair share of struggles last year which is something that we're not accustomed to. Um, I, I'm not sure how all of these pieces fit defensively, how much better you could get there. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, I definitely agree with you. I, I think that there are a few, a few reasons to pause. You, you need Cameron Hunter who missed all of last season to hit the ground running and be a starting caliber point guard. Um, you know, and how do these pieces fit together? I mean, just because yeah. you have, you know, on paper, maybe eight, nine guys who I think you feel pretty good about in a rotation. That doesn't mean that they're going to fit well together and play well off each other. And, uh, you know, every single season now we're going to have three, four new faces exiting and coming in the door. Um, you know, how does that work at Wisconsin and is the culture strong enough to endure all the moving pieces? Yeah, that's a great question, man. Cause much like football is sometimes it takes a while for the chemistry to build. Now I think your other point is dead on though. I think they found pieces that I think, can fit better around each other. So I am super excited to see what the shooting does for Steven Crowell. Cause now you can't double him, right? If you double him, he finds the open shooter. How, however, the one, the one fly in that ointment is there's certain teams that don't have to double Crowell. And then where do you create offense? Cause then in those moments, Corral has trouble with that physicality and we don't have a true point guard necessarily to break things down. Unless, unless Hunter is that point and guard point, our pick and roll guy who I think he can be, but that's where it gets a little dicey. I think. Yeah, I that's it's an area that uh, I'm not concerned about, but I definitely don't think will be as good as going to be getting to the free throw line. That's something this group did awesome last year, like very consistently. And obviously, you know, store was a huge part of that. You got guys like Hunter, Tanjay, Blackwell. Like there, there are going to be options. Daniel Free Tag. These are guys who are going to be able to get to the bucket, but will it be enough to, you know, kind of make up for some of what walked out the door? I don't think this team is better, um, nor do I think they're more talented. But I think that they have eight or nine guys you feel pretty good about. And like you said, if a lot of ifs, see how it comes together. But uh, I, th I think this is still a, a tournament team. I'm not I'm not willing to call it more a lot more than that right now. I love it, man. Uh, he is Dylan Graff over at uh, Badger Notes. Go check out his work. Go follow him on Twitter at Dylan Graff. Um, thank you as always, man. Really do appreciate it. For everybody tuning in, thank you guys as well. Um, a lot of great content coming up this week. Official visits coming up. A couple different people jumping on the show. So appreciate y'all. Appreciate Dylan. Go follow his work on Wisconsin.